the blood. <laughs> but I get the, I get kind of, anyway, the blood. Um, for the, when they were in Egypt, they were getting ready to go and they were doing the Passover. The first Passover, they took the lamb and um, the lamb was sacrificed and they put the blood from the lamb over the doorposts, over the, you know, the uh, lentil. Um, and that way, uh, when the spirit of death came through that night, they would be spared. The death would pass over them. That's where I, I, it, it, the light dawned on me. That's where Passover came from. Death passed over their house. I'm like, wow. I mean, I've been a Christian for, I don't know, we got a couple, three decades. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a while for the light to come on. But a lot of it for me is um, um, building the picture. I mean, it's still, during this time, this last couple of weeks, I've been, you know, because I talked to Mike about this um, at the baptism, and he's like, well, maybe, you know, you got, it sounds like you got to talk there. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and, <laughs> and over the last two weeks, God's been opening up more and more and just expanding on this picture. Um, but the blood, the blood of Jesus, you know, I, um, that's always been hard for me. You know, I, uh, I'm an animal person and blood sacrifices, and I know my sister had a real hard time with that when we were in like religious ed after school years ago. It's like sacrificing animals was really hard to handle. But when we look back at why they did it, back in the, um, in the temple, a lot of their sacrifices were for feeding the priests as well as atoning for sin. So it was the body again and the blood. The body was for sustenance. As Jesus said, I am the bread of life. It was sustenance, it was feeding. It was nourishing, as well as covering your sins. But okay, now why did why do we have to have why do we have to have blood in the first place? Then you gotta go all the way back. You gotta go back to Genesis. And um, Adam and Eve blew it, you know, you know all that story. And when they blew it, they realized that they received the knowledge of good and evil when they ate off the tree they weren't supposed to. They rebelled, said, you know what, we you know, we listen to this circuit guy, and he's like, yeah, that's right, we can do our own thing. So they went and ate off the tree. Wrong, you know, okay, we're not listening to God, we're going to do our own thing. Bad news, anyway. And uh, then they realized, um, because their innocence was broken, when they rebelled, they, they lost their innocence. So they realized that they were naked. Then they tried to cover themselves up, right, fig leaves? How long are fig leaves going to leave, you know, last? <laughs> that's why I this is not going to work, y'all. <laughs> so God came and he, he runs into him. He's like, oh man, you know, we've got to, got to cover your shame, you know, because they were shame. Now they had received shame. Uh, they didn't know it before because they were innocent. So he sacrificed an animal to clothe them, to put skin on them, to cover their sin. So it's like the, the blood of the animal had to be spilled in order for them to be covered in order for them to not be ashamed before God. And I realized that the blood that was sacrificed, it tells us in the Bible, and anybody that's 100 knows this, the life is in the blood. And when the animal or a person loses their blood, you know, that's death. Um, and you have to take the blood out of an animal in order for it to be to be edible. So you have to gather the blood. You, you drain the blood out. And that's the life that you're holding. And Jesus took his blood and applied it to the lintel. Now, um, that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother talk. The mercy seat was another picture that God showed me. Because through his mercy, because he loves us, he used the blood of his only son to cover our sins permanently. No more animal sacrifices. It's like, you know, he did it once and for all, it's done. So the, the blood that he put over the lentil protects us, but I think it's also a reflection of what's coming. Because if you look at the Old Testament and the New Testament, they reflect each other, right? A lot of what happens in the New Testament, like Jesus is the sacrificial lamb that was established in the Old Testament, as a sin covering. 
And I believe that that same blood is going to be on the mercy seat when it comes to the judgment day. His blood has already covered us. When God looks at us, he sees the blood of Jesus. He doesn't see who we were. He forgets our sins because we're washed. You know, he sees us through the blood of Christ, which is pure, and it's covered our sin. So it's like, for me, that, um, that time of communion became something brand new. And what I really wanted to, I really wanted you to get out of there. The whole thing is that, you know, um, getting to know God is an experience, it's a growing thing. And the more you learn about Him, not just, you know, um, sitting in, in places talking, but talking with each other about what's God showing you, because He shows us things even in nature. You know, He can show us things you know, right in front of us in a tree or in a flower. And um, if we build on those things, like the disciples, when they sat down to pass over that night, this is where communion started. I mean, this is where the church saw communion. Um, they didn't know what it was, right? The disciples were that they don't know what communion is. They're just having the Last Supper and they're remembering the Passover. They're remembering their they're leaving Egypt. And Jesus said, oh, I want you to take this. And he hands them the blood, or the, the wine, and says, this is my blood. Um, at that point, they didn't know what he was talking about. You know, they're, all they know is he said he's leaving them and they're, they're kind of like, they've been fighting with him for two or three days about this. You're leaving us? What? And uh, yeah, and, and they don't get it until afterwards. Now, if you, if you remember, he said, take this, this is my blood, and take the, the bread, that this is my body. And they're sitting there at dinner, and they're finishing up their meal, and they're having their bread and their wine. Okay, now they've, they've done this, and they have no clue they know it's part of the Passover dinner. The bread and the wine are part of Passover dinner. And it has significance in the Old Testament. You know, as far as the, the blood of the lamb and the bread and the manna from heaven that God supplied them in the desert. But when they left Egypt, they had to leave in a hurry so they couldn't put any yeast in it. So they had the flat bread. That's why we get the flat bread or the, the bread without yeast when we do communion. Because that's what they had at the Last Supper. So they're celebrating Passover. And Jesus is telling them about the bread and the wine. They're like, okay, well, you know, this, yeah, this is what we always do at Passover. So I figured probably, I don't know, hopefully they weren't as slow as I was. <laughs> but, you know, they didn't have, like, um, iPads or they didn't do journaling. Like, they were writing every day everything that Jesus said and what happened. And um, So you figure it's a year or two, maybe 10, 20 down the road. And they're talking about the things that they learned from Jesus and the things that he taught them. And they're going, well, remember the Last Supper? Remember what he said? He handed us that bread. And he said, this is my body. He handed us the blood. The wine said, this is my blood. Do you remember? He told us to remember him. And we didn't get it at the time. We didn't know he was leaving. Like leaving me goodbye. And um, I think that's when they started realizing that they had to... Um, take it more seriously, that that was a time to remember him. So every Passover, now if y'all lost somebody, um, like a parent or a brother or sister, somebody real close to you, you remember the day that, you know, they died or their sickness that led up to it. Well, I know for our family, um, we remember Thanksgiving was the weekend my dad died. Now, I don't remember the date exactly. I remember it was Thanksgiving weekend. So now every Thanksgiving, we remember Dad. My mom died around my sister's birthday, so it gets close to her, her birthday, and we remember her. Well, and people are really good. We set up holidays to remember things, right? And um, I think when he said that, remember me, it wasn't remember me like a textbook. It was remember me as a friend, remember who I was. Not just, you know, like we read about John Kennedy, we remember when he was assassinated, you want to remember the person. You know, when you remember the person you were close to, you don't remember a bunch of statistics. Right. You remember the individual. You remember their heart. You remember their spirit. You remember how they affected you, how they touched you. And I think that that um, Jesus would be honored if we would remember him like that. 
when we take communion, that we would remember him as who he is, not just body and blood, but as who he is. God is love, and Jesus sent, came here with his love. He, God sent his son as a, a symbol of love, <laughs> the ultimate love, right? Sacrificing his son. Jesus wants us to remember that was the whole key. He told us to love one another as I have loved you. So I think when he says, remember me, it's the body and the blood were the payment so that we could remember him for who he is. And that's why, uh, for me, communion took on a whole new dimension. It was like, um, it's like falling in love again. It was really cool because it was funny at the Michael Bolton concert. Well, we all, I'm getting overtime. Can you give me in like a five minute or something? But. <laughs> you got <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, yeah, because at the point, I was coming back uh, from Michael Bolton with Deb, and you know, I hear all the songs. He did a lot of songs on, you know, love and um, if I loved you, but I lied, and or, yeah, I said I love you, but I lied, and you know, when the man loves a woman, well, it brought back a lot of memories, you know, of kind of messed up relationships, and yeah, bombed out, and that didn't work that good. That's true. You know, God save me again. <laughs> but um, on the way back, I thought, you know, I don't, I don't care, I just didn't click. Nothing really worked. And um, all of a sudden I felt like this, this love washed over me. I'm driving down the road and I'm like, okay. I knew it was God, it was touching me to, you know, I just want you to know how much I love you. And I was just overcome with this love because I've been thinking about the communion things, you know, for a couple of weeks. And, and um, it would bring tears to my eyes when I would think about the whole thing, you know, I thought, now I have like a bigger picture, but it keeps growing, you know, this is cool, because God's got so much to show us. And uh, he reminded me a couple days later, because it took me a couple days to recover from this dose, you know, I'm not used to that kind of like inundation. And a couple days later, I realized that I had had that same feeling like about 20 years ago, when I was out in California, because I can remember driving down the road, and um, I was kind of, I was sad about being alone because I've done a lot of working with the youth group. I've always been like the mom kind of figure. Because <laughs> I worked with the youth group and I'm like in my 20s. And all the other kids are in, you know, like in 18, 19. And um, some of them are in their early 20s because they just got into college. But um, I'm driving down the road and I'm like, you know, Lord, I, it's really hard being alone, doing this alone. And um, it was like I felt that love come on me at that time. And he reminded me of that this day, you know, a couple of days ago. He, he said, honey, I've loved you for like, since you decided to love me. Don't you understand? I, I've loved you that whole time. And what you saw, I thought it was a man's heart that I was seeing. It was, it was a man's heart. It was his heart that I was seeing that day like 25, 30 years ago. That was his heart for me. And I didn't understand that until like two days ago that it's been him all along. And um, when I was thinking about the he said, you know, yes, I've been, we've been uh, dating for this 30 some odd years, but he says, I loved you even when I was forming you in the womb, when I was there with the Father. I knew what you would go through, I knew the, the journey that you've taken. I loved you then. I was just waiting for you to recognize me and, and to fall in love with me. So um, that's my journey over the last few days, the last couple of weeks, with what's been known as communion. So I just kind of wanted to share that with you and encourage you to let God develop that picture. And a good way to do that is to get into his word. I don't care if all you read is a, a chapter a week, and he can talk to you through that. You know, just I just pray. I just want to pray a second, and now uh, I'm just going to pray that the Lord would open our eyes to see that, that we could see God around us. We could see God in the everyday. That we could understand that He's right here with us now, and that He intends to be there for us. Regardless, it's up to us if we turn around and choose to recognize him and then take it from
between him and Lord, I ask that you would open up the pictures, that you develop the pictures, and just <laughs> teach our hearts, Lord, your Holy Spirit. We invite your Holy Spirit to come and begin to teach us who you are. We just bless you and thank you and praise you, Lord, for your body and for your blood, Lord. We thank you that you loved us enough to give it all. And just ask that you bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Will you run and build a hand out to me? Yes. Oh, I think you guys are warning up. <laughs> You're good. So let's take communion before we worship for a little bit. Most of you guys have heard me say before, you know, when Jesus said, take this in remembrance of me, he didn't say, take this this one time and, and remember me just tonight while I'm hanging out and having dinner with you. He said, every time you eat this, every time you drink this, remember me, remember who I am, remember the person I am, remember me as fully son of God, and fully man, remember me fully bearing the burden of sin. Remember me, these things I'm going to go through. Remember me dying on the cross and bearing the penalty for sin so that you can have a knowledge of God, so that you can come to know God. Imagine how our lives would change if every single time we brought a drink to our mouth, every single time we brought food to our mouths, we remember who Jesus is. Do I, do I, do I get something to I'm working on it. Come on, man. Why do I here, princess. <laughs> Let me just pray real quick and we'll take this together, okay? And Heavenly Father, but Lord, we just bow and worship and praise before you. The love that you have for us and that we were, while we were still sinners, you sent your son to die for us. God, that we would know that kind of love and live that kind of love out in our lives to everyone that we encounter in the world so that people actually see Jesus. They don't see our fallen nature, they don't see our, our judgmental, hypocritical actions that we carry out in the name of Jesus, they don't even come close to representing him. We take this recognizing as the body and the blood of you, Lord Jesus, in his name, amen.